my friend Bob from Texas wants to know, where do you get your ideas? Your friend Bob from Texas? <laughs> where do I get my ideas? Um, oh, you know, every book I ever read, everything that ever happened to me. Um, this, the, this book had a couple of specific things that made it happen. Um, one um, was actually a very Texas thing, in a sense. Um, I started this book, I got the idea for this book in the fall of 2005, and uh, that was, it was right after Hurricane Katrina, which everyone remembers. Uh, Houston was uh, sort of, it was, it, Houston was the city that absorbed the most refugees from Hurricane Katrina. I was very proud of Houston, actually, um, on, that, uh, on that occasion. Um, but the hurricane you don't remember is Hurricane Rita, which hit Houston about, I don't know, six weeks later, and I was part of an evacuation of about a, a, a total failure of an evacuation of about a million people trying to get out of Houston in the same 12-hour period when we all thought a Force 5 hurricane was going to bore right through the city. And uh, so I was one of many, 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 many thousands of people who got stranded on the highway in the middle of the night. Um, it was like a scene out of Exodus, you know, everybody had run out of gas. Family sleeping by the side of the road, all the mini marts completely ransacked. Um, and, uh, you know, we'd finally, you know, we'd gotten 60 miles in 10 hours, and uh, we just jumped the median and drove home. And as luck would have it, the storm um, missed, it sort of swerved to the east and missed Houston. Um, but being part of a, a, a sort of moment of large scale civic panic, I think, what made a really strong, made a real indelible impression on me. And, and a lot of that passed straight into the book. It sort of, it sort of plowed the field for the book. Um, the specific inspiration for the story was, however, my eight-year-old daughter, eight turning nine at the time, who came to me with a look of great uh, concern on her face and said that she was worried that my other books were boring. Um, <laughs> which she had not read, in my defense, you know, but she, uh, she, had, uh, she had read uh, The Flaps, as she explained, and they, they seemed not to be about anything. And, um, and I said, well, they're not really for somebody your age. You know? And I said, well, what, what, what do you think I should write about? And she said, I think you should write a story about a girl who saves the world in a moment of, of unvarnished egotism, I think, on her part. And, um, <laughs> And so I said, fine, I'll, I'll do that, because most parenting is, is faking it. And um, uh, I said, you'll have to help me. Uh, why don't we spend some time together? And that, this, I'd say the passage began because my daughter needed to improve her bicycle riding skills. Uh, I, I said, come on my afternoon runs on your bike, and uh, we'll, we'll play a game called Let's Make a Story Together. And that is exactly what we did for about the next three months for about an hour every afternoon after school. Uh, we just sort of floated around my West Houston neighborhood, putting together a story. Now, I had done exercises like this with my creative writing students for many years. It's actually my best parlor trick, is being able to take some random elements and kind of quickly give them, you know, the sort of the shapeliness that a story requires. The difference here was I was not doing it with a 20-year-old, a room full of 20-year-olds, I was doing it with a, you know, a nine-year-old kid. And we had only one rule, which was it must be interesting. <laughs> when this had all begun. So if it was actually interesting, we were going to put it in the story. Um, and uh, over those weeks, which in which I had no intention of ever writing a book, a, you know, a story took shape, and it is in very much the story that became a novel. I mean, the, the, there are lots of details to work out, and of course, it's not a book for an eight-year-old. Um, <laughs> those of you who have even read the first chapter, uh, in which a hooker shoots a John, know this. Um, <laughs> and in case you're wondering, my daughter did not suggest that part of the story. Uh, but uh, it was, but the, the basic outline of the story came from time spent with, you know, a third grader, actually. Um, I, it was uh, remarkable. I, it was, I think she sort of set loose my inner kid and uh, silenced my inner critic um, and freed me up to write a book that was really, uh, you know, this is odd because four billion people die in the book, but it was really fun to write. <laughs> it was really fun to write. Thank you.